Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're taking a look at Archman Linux. It is a rolling release based on Arch, and we're presently on their website, archman.org is where you want to go if you want to see more information about it. And it just says Archman Linux is a powerful, lightweight, fast, visual, and stable Linux distribution based on Arch Linux. It's a rolling version. Try once. Here you can download the appropriate Archman Linux versions for you. We recommend that you follow the recommendation in the release notes. Pac-Man commands. You can get all the software you need from Pac-Man. And donation. All your financial and moral contributions to the Archman project are very valuable to us. And then you can scroll down. Latest news. XFCE. Archman Mate. Archman XFCE KDE Plasma. We're going to be looking at it today in a XFC environment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and close out of this beautiful website and look at what you get. When you download it, put it on a USB stick or load it up in a virtual machine, you are met directly with the Calamaris installer. Right now, we're not gonna install it. We're just gonna give it a quick test drive. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna close out of this. And this is the desktop we have. It's a very beautiful desktop. Got Archman Linux right here. It's got the Penguin over here. Let's do a quick right click. And as you expect with the XFCE environment, you can create a launcher, URL link, documents, files, uh, desktop settings. Let's go ahead and click on desktop settings. And you can see the different wallpapers that you have available. Go ahead and make this a little bigger. And I want to look at just a different wallpaper. Let's click on that one and close out. And that's a beautiful wallpaper, archman.org. I love the artwork on the desktops. I really do. Okay, as you can see, we got one panel. It's on the bottom. You've got the power button. You've got sound settings. You've got your internet settings. Obviously, we've got updates available, 204 to be exact. And you got your battery power, and you have the clock. And then you have two workspaces. you got workspace one, workspace two. And then can you right click? Let's see what we can do on the panel preferences. Mode, you can do it horizontal, you can do it vertical, you can do a desk bar. So I guess you'd have to move it to where you wanted, but I'm gonna go ahead and click with horizontal. Intelligently hide, row size, all the good stuff you'd expect on an XFCE panel adjustments. So let's close out of that. You've got Show Desktop, you've got Firefox, which we were just in to look at their website, and then let's look at the File Manager. We open up the File Manager, and it's the Thunar File Manager and a nice light theme. Icons are nice and big and easy to read and easy to see. Overall, what to expect from an XFCE environment. It's quick, it's fast, it lets you get your work done, and it doesn't get in the way. So let's close out of that, and let's go down here and let's... All right, I like their take on the applications menu. Right now, it's showing all of your favorites. Settings Manager, let's go right there real quick. Over on Settings Manager, you've got About Me, you've got Appearance, let's check Appearance. Right now, we're using the Kogor window. I'm gonna leave that, or you could go XArc Dark, but I'm gonna stay with the win. Icons, we're presently using the Surfing Arc, but you've got Papyrus Icon Theme, Papyrus Light, Papyrus Dark, you would just click on that, those icons would change, and you'd be good to go. Fonts, right now it's running a Liberation Sans. If you wanted to change your default font, you just click on it. Come down here, find one that you would like. Let's just go with Italic. And let's select that, and it would change it across the operating system. And then you're good to go there. And then Settings. Menu buttons, event sounds, window scaling. Let's go back to All Settings. Clipboard manager, desktop, panel profiles, panel, notifications. You open up your notifications. you got Do Not Disturb you can put on if you want to. And then you can go over and set notifications for specific applications. You can add or subtract those applications in here. If you don't want notifications from your settings helper, you just go over and click it off. You won't receive them anymore. It's that simple. And then your log. Back to all settings. File Manager Settings, Screen Saver, Text Editor Settings, Window Manager, Window Manager Tweaks. Let's look at that. Right here, Cycling. You can adjust the way you cycle through windows. Focus, Activate Focus Stealing Prevention, Accessibility, Workspaces, Placement, Compositor, Placement, Minimum Size of the Windows to Trigger Smart Placement. You can make the minimum size larger or smaller. And by default, place the windows at the center of the screen or under mouse pointer. So if you opened it up and your mouse pointer was over here, they would show up over here. So we're just going to leave that setting alone. And then Compositor. 
opacity of window decorations. You can make them opaque. You can make them transparent. You can go down here and adjust all of these to where you want. Opacity of inactive windows, window during move, during resize. It gives you the power to do everything you want to do there and really customize the operating system and the look of the operating system to the way you like it. Workspaces, XFC terminal settings, Bluetooth, color profiles, displays, default application, Archman settings manager, and it brings up language, language packs, user accounts, time and date, configure keyboard settings, add and remove software. Let's see what we got over here. Okay, if you're familiar with any Arch distribution towards the lines of like Manjaro, this is very familiar. Now, if you decide to go download Archman and you decide you want to install it, the first thing you need to do before you touch anything on installing software is come over here to this. It's the three little dots. Click on that and go down to Preferences. It's going to bring this window up. Go to Third Party. Make sure you enable AUR support. Leave that clicked on. Go back to General. Verify Check for Updates is on. And that's it. Then you'll be able to go over here and you'll be able to see categories. You'll be able to see groups. You can do searches. If you wanted to search for OBS, you could search for OBS and it brings it up right there. OBS, you just click on the arrow key and down here it'll say one pending operation apply. But the first thing you want to do after I just showed you that is go over, make sure your system is completely up to date. Then you can go searching for software and find it and install it. It's that simple. And if it's not available in the official repositories, once you've switched on the AUR, like I showed you, AUR will be listed over here and it'll show up in the AUR repository. So let's close out of that. Accessibility, firewall configuration, session startup, settings editor. So let's close out of that. Back over to the app menu. We want to check out the terminal emulator. First thing I want to check is if it's got HTOP installed and it does. So we'll go ahead and maximize this. Right now, I've got two gigabytes of memory issued to this virtual machine. We are presently at rest with the terminal open, setting at 815 megabytes. That's a little heavier than some XFCE environments, but it's still less than a gig and pretty impressive. Of the two CPUs that I have issued to this machine, we are using less than 5% of those CPUs. So it's a very light operating system. It's a little heavier on the memory by about... 300 megs it's still under a gig it's still solid still quick still an xfc environment on top of arch let's close out of that then you got web browser calculator display LibreOffice installed out of the box sensor viewer you got gimp out of the box simple screen recorder out of the box and inkscape out of the box so those are some pretty impressive apps installed out of the box something you don't have to go and download it's already there for you it's just that much easier to get started we go to accessories, you got catfish file search, Thunar file manager, task manager, XF burn, education, you got LibreOffice math, games, you've got chess, and then of course the graphics we just went over, you got Restretto image viewer, you got view noir, internet, you've got pigeon internet messenger, and you got Firefox, multimedia, you got pulse audio, parole media player, you got MPV media player. Office, of course, LibreOffice, we've already discussed. Color profiles, Archman settings, your appearance, and system. What I do not see is a mail program. Let's look up mail. You do have a mail reader, but you're going to have to go download that. It's not installed from the initial ISO image. I love the menu layout that they have. It's simple. It's sweet. You can make it bigger and smaller, I do believe. You can make it bigger or smaller if you want. I mean, everybody's bragging about Windows 11 and their center icons and this and that and the other. I mean, Linux has been doing that for over 20 years. And this is a layout that I'm really familiar with right here. I mean, it's what Windows is copying. I mean, let's just get down to the brass tacks of it all. Windows one day hopes to grow up and be Linux. They never will be, though. In a nutshell, that's Archman Linux. Like I said, if you like what you see and you want to give it a shot, go over to archman.org. You will have to translate it because it's in Turkish. Zip on over, translate it. See right now, you got to translate, translate it to English, and there you go. Pick out the version you want to download. It's available in XFCE, Mate, or Mate, however you want to say it, LXQT, and KDE Plasma. Download it, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine, Take it for a test drive. I think you'll be impressed. It's a good looking operating system and it's XFCE and Arch. How can you go wrong? Let's close those tabs. 
Okay, guys, tell me what you think of Archman Linux down in the comments below. And before you go, do me a quick favor, like, subscribe, or follow my channel. Doesn't cost anything, and at the end of the day, you can always unsubscribe. And if you want to follow me on my socials, or better yet, become a patron to the channel on Patreon, those links are in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.